morning, everybody. Hey, welcome to today's uh, Sunday School lesson. Is I guess it's a good way to to, to start off with faith and works. <laughs> we have been working the technical part, we can stay together. But uh, I think we all can uh, rest assured that we know who's in control. And, and believe it or not, I have an unusual comments about today's lesson. Um, and despite of everything that's been going on in our land, I think it's ideal that we study works and faith and how they can either go together or go against each other. So with that being said, let us pray. Father, we thank you for just waking us up and allowing us to see another day. We thank you, God, that you are the author and finisher of our saying. And we pray, Lord, that you allow us to come together in spirit and truth, study your word. We pray, God, that you touch us, to get our minds focus on you, and all the distractions of the world that's going on, and things that takes us away from you. We pray, Lord, for the people of Israel as they're dealing with their situation, and it goes into the lesson that we're studying today. God, you are the God of the Jews and the Gentiles, and we just pray, God, that we just do everything that's pleasing in your sight. We just thank you, Lord, for today, and we thank you for each other. We thank you, God, as you just brought us together in spirit and truth. These Lord and our blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, as we have done throughout. Recording in progress. Oh, I got it. I got it. Um, we have a, a, a guest in our class today. And believe it or not, she helped us set up. What's your name, ma'am? Elizabeth. Miss Elizabeth, she's in the classroom with us. So we want to welcome her. We also want to welcome you all that are out there online. And also welcome you all that are here in the classroom today. We know that it's, it's starting to get a little breezy outside, but we know, know that with the spirit, there, there's come soothing, there's come warmth, there's come peace. And as we study uh, Galatians in particular, uh, for those of you who have, for those of you who have uh, uh, the landlines, you use those, you can go to star nine, you're going to raise your hand or star six, if you have a telephone. Same thing as we do week after week. There we go. Now, we're going to talk about, uh, in today's lesson, we're going to hit chapter two in particular, but you're all going to probably see me talk a little bit about the whole entire book and it all comes together. I do know in particular, as I was studying this lesson, uh, chapter one talks about false teachings. That's one of the first teaching points we should be getting from this. What kind of teaching are we getting? Are we getting the true word of God and who's teaching it and how do we validate that? And as we get into scripture, we're going to go into how words and faith contradict if we ain't careful. And also, we got to look at the motive and the reason why. Why do we do what we do? Why did the Gentiles do what they do? Why did the Jews do what they do? And for what reason? And for ultimately what goes on. So as we go into that and get into the application of the word, then finally we'll, we'll summarize it with a few questions and then we'll bring Pastor on to uh, sum it up. We're going to probably go about anywhere from 35 to 40 minutes. And this is an interactive class, so if you want to speak, raise your hand. Say something. I'll stop talking to you guys and talk to Reverend Graham is watching the chat. And so she'll she'll stop me too. Wave your hand, let me know, give me the signal, and we'll go from there. Okay. So anytime you all want to discuss, you have something to say, just let us know. Now look at we're gonna take a quick look at the purpose of Galatians. And Galatians, if you really think about it, is one of the first epistles that Paul wrote. And when Paul was out there, well, after he got converted, converted to Saul, and we taught that in the very room, when God converted him from Saul to Paul, and he knew exactly, exactly what his purpose was, was to go out and teach and preach God's word. That's what his purpose was. Now, Paul learned that certain Jew te Jewish teachers were unsettling his new converts in Galatia by and party on them circumcision and the yoke of the Mosaic law as necessary requirements of salvation 
and inclusion in the church. There you go right there. So when you're talking about works, the law versus faith. All right, here we go in that very first sentence. And on hearing this, Paul wrote to deny, key word, deny the legal requirements such as circumcision under the law, the old covenant law, have anything to do with the operation of God's grace in Christ for salvation under the new covenant and to redeem and to reaffirm clearly the Holy Spirit life through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's a lot <clears throat> for us and for all of us. We have the law and we have the works of the law, but in order to reaffirm that salvation, that's what we're the Jews and the Gentiles struggle with, and we're going to talk about that today. And that's what we struggle with today, too. Even as we look in Israel today, we look at Hamas, we look at Palestine, they're struggling with that very principle of what I just read. But God's word says, through one, through the Holy Spirit, faith in Jesus Christ. All right? We're going to talk about the law as it is and the works of it. Some of you teachers in here have already covered that. But ultimately, as I get to this, faith in Jesus Christ is what's going to get us where we got to go. Now, our very pastor talked about God's kingdom, the kingdom of God. And how do we get there? This is the start. This is what Paul was purposing. This is what Paul was tasked to do, was to lay out the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ to whoever listened. Jew, Gentile, it didn't matter. Now, what they struggled with was how do they work with each other? How do they get along with each other or not? How do they fellowship with each other or not? That's where they struggle. And we struggle today in that same regard. However, if we know and are being led by the Spirit of God through the Holy Spirit, we know it. Just like Paul did. We know it. Oh, as he faced and as we face, do we lose ourselves in the midst of that? Do we go contrary to the scripture? When it's time to stand, do we stand or do we buckle up? Do we cave into the pressures of the world? Do we cave into the different groups and different denominations? Or do we stand on what God's word is saying? I'll probably stop right here. I'm here to hope. I'm here to say amen in the classroom. Amen, amen. I heard <laughs> To put a nice, quick pin on it, this lesson, this, this is all about right here. And this is what it's all about for us today. Even after we get dressed up in these nice clothes, we don't need to get it twisted. There's a message that's got to be presented, and we are called to do yeah. Especially if we have accepted Jesus as our Lord. Yeah. Jew or Gentile. And Romans tells us, all have seen it. It didn't say part. All. Mm -hmm. I'm getting some more here now. Yeah. 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 So I'm attention. <laughs> all have seen it. And fall short of whose glory? Glory of God. God's glory. Mm -hmm. See, that's what the Jews and the Gentiles struggle with. In Galatia, they struggle with it. Mm -hmm. Paul had to be bold. Why? People coming against you. Mm -hmm. You speaking that truth. You know that truth. You got to stand up. You got to be like this. Mm -hmm. You got to stand in this way and say it. Me, you're going to be powerful. Me, no, me, it's going to be right. But you got to stand it. The historical background, I already talked about some of it. Again, Paul wrote this to the churches of Galatia. Right? Some believe the Galatians were beginning in, in the northern, uh, the Gauls of northern Galatia. It's far more likely that Paul wrote this official in southern region of the province of Galatia, where he started with Barnabas, the evangelized church throughout the whole region there. Again, two principles. Is faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior the only prerequisite for salvation? That's what the Jews struggle with. And are certain Old Testament Jewish practices and laws required in order to gain salvation in Christ? Bottom line. Mm -hmm. Is that what it is? The work of circumcision? Or do we have to have faith in Christ? Simple. You don't need a uh, Harvard PhD to get to this one. Yeah. It's two principles. 
Do we believe it or not? Are we walking in faith or walking in works? Chapter 5 talks about what? Works of the flesh versus what? Y'all know the words. Yeah. Fruits of the spirit. Here we go. They collide. The works of the flesh will not get you in the kingdom of God. Going back to that, because that's what we're doing, folks. Mm -hmm. We're taking this word to help them see what Paul was talking about as we get closer to the kingdom. That's why Christ came back, because all of it is about what? The death, burial, and eventual resurrection. Through possession. Y'all say that all the time. So as we talk about the Old Testament through Galatians, it really prepares us for what? Future state of the New Testament through the Holy Spirit in Jesus Christ. Y'all see how this goes? Mm -hmm. I told you I had comments about this lesson. Mm -hmm. Again, <laughs> as we prepare and live life, daily life, these are the type of questions that we must ask. We must ask this. Whether here in the land of America or we go across Israel, Jordan, Germany, Turkey, Russia, China, don't matter. When we go into these lands, do we take the spirit of the living God with us or not? Or do we conform to what they're doing? What they at? Take the living spirit with you. Say again? Take the living spirit with you. That's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to do it. That's what the pastor said we're supposed to take you with us. Do we always? No. no. Don't be true for me now. Come on. No. No. Do we always take you with us? No. No. Why don't we? Well, maybe if we take it with us, but we just don't proclaim it. Why don't we proclaim it? The environment that's around us, the hostile environment that we may run into. Pressure, environment, whatever. We just saw what's up there. We're scared. They don't want to talk to them. Especially if you're in an environment you probably ain't coupled with, you don't know, you ain't seen it all, and you're going to go in there and be oh, that has the spirit of something. Why? The spirit of God. <laughs> but your opposition is busy too. Mm -hmm. oh, that can be heard in this very room. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. War is war. Mm -hmm. Preparing for war and being ready for war is two different things. Mm -hmm. That's right. And as Mike Tyson said, you don't start to fight till you get that first shot outside the head. <laughs> we get hit back. <laughs> Saints of God. Yeah. What happens when you get hit back? You say all oh, this beautiful stuff, the scriptures say all this stuff, and then somebody hit you. Oh, hit you in the face with something. Or they see you not doing what God's word said. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, you ain't doing all that. So what about this? And you trying to tell me, man, you lost me. I ain't listening to you. I'm done. I'm, here. I'm not even coming back to your church. I'm going there. <laughs> Y'all tell me that ain't happening. Yeah, yeah that's happening. I don't know what it is. That's why at verse chapter one tells me we have to be in the word I ain't said that yet. We have to be in the word, but we also have to be led by the spirit, mm -hmm. and we have to really focus on the teaching, who teaching, and what they say. Mm -hmm. You teaching me what you stand for. Oh, you ain't, this word, you ain't saying for this word. You ain't in line with it. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. You, okay. I see you. The word, good. We wrote. Okay. Yeah. Well done. Mm -hmm. So then, that's the, the, the the issues, even the issues of life that we have to deal with. Standing on that faith, walking in that faith, showing that faith. Some call that the anointed of God. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. God's anointed is on you, it's going to draw. And the pastor, the pastor talk about that all the time, right? The drawing, God will send them, but the anointing will bring them there because they see God and they see God in you. And so, you can't see God on you in you if you fight. Even you walking in the flesh versus walking in the spirit. See, because chapter 3 tells us that just shall live by our faith. It didn't say live by works, it said by our faith. Okay. Any questions? Mm -hmm. right, we roll. Now, let's get into the scripture themselves.
when Cephas, which is Peter, misspelled, I'm sorry, came to Antioch, opposed him to his face. Y'all hear what Paul said? I opposed him to his face because he stood to him. He went against God's word, so stand up and don't tell him. How many of us did that? Mm -hmm. Somebody going against God's word, and we know it's wrong, and we never. You got to stand it, just like Peter did, just like Paul did. For before certain men came from James, he used to eat with the Gentiles. Why ain't he one of them? But when they arrived, he began to draw back, separate himself from the Gentiles because he was afraid. Here we go. And we're afraid. He was of those who belonged to the circumcision group. He was scared. And he went along with the, with the, with the crowd. Y'all know we do that too. Mm -hmm. The other Jews joined him in his what? Hypocrisy. Uh huh. So that by their hypocrisy, even Barnabas, what do you want to preach? Yeah. What do you want to preach? Yeah. 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 Y'all think they came out with us? Oh, yeah. So I'm here to teach you preach the book. Then I'm listening to the body. They know I ain't here. This is not a grace of the book. That happens to us. So we have to be careful. Let us read. When they saw that they were not acting in line with the truth of the gospel, I said to Peter in front of them all, You are a Jew, yet you live like a Gentile and not like a Jew. How is it then that you force Gentiles to follow Jewish customs? Y'all hear me? And that works, God. So why are you making them follow this? We are Jews by birth and not simple Gentiles. So, they can talk their head. Why? Why? Because of the birth. They're 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 birth. they because by the works of the law, no one will be justified. Everybody catch that? Mm -hmm. so let's go there. Let's go. We're about to read. But if Christ, but if it's seeking to be justified in Christ, we Jews find ourselves also among the sinners. Does not mean that Christ promotes sin. You know? Yeah. We know that. If I reveal what I destroyed, then I really will be a lawbreaker. But through the law, I died to the law so that I might live for God. I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. And I put this in red so that we get it. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me. And what did he do? He gave himself for me. For me. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the gospel in itself right there. He gave himself for me. That's what we're supposed to be doing. But the Jew and the Gentile, they struggle with that. Because what? They want what they want. They want not giving nothing. They want to get it. Don't we struggle with that too? When we want what we want. Yeah. And not set aside the grace of God, but if righteousness could be gained through the law, Christ died for nothing. Mm -hmm. so that's from me right there. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing. He yeah. died. And we know that ain't true. Yeah. What I just said about false doctrine, false preaching, false teaching. We hear anything else other than that. Spiritual alert gives on. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit prayerfully should be leading you. Mm -hmm. oh. All is about him, and it's about him risen. Crucified all that. Mm -hmm. So the Jews, the Gentiles, all this fighting, bickering, y'all doing. If this is not about getting folks to the kingdom of God through the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ, shut it down. Amen. And if we ain't doing that, we walk in that ball to right. and we live in it more than anything. Yes. Right. We live in that thing. So we have to stand like Paul did. 
and call that little box if it's wrong. And then the Holy Spirit will tell it. But we sit there, Paul and the music, and we just feel it. We got to that, especially now, today, with all the things going on. All of us in here know if we have an opportunity and a responsibility and a calling and a command from God to stand. Mm. I'm just letting that soak in right there. Oh, and a command. And some of us that have that, been talking to me separately, no more military guy. Once you know your orders and your calling, ain't no more talk left but to do. Mm -hmm. See, ladies and gentlemen, in First Baptist, outside of First Baptist, and this is Elizabeth House, yes, this is her. We do a lot of talking in this land. Mm -hmm. And we ain't doing a lot of doing. Mm -hmm. yeah. When we get tired of the talking and then we start doing, mm -hmm. stuff don't happen. Mm -hmm. The Lord is going to guide us every step of the way. Mm -hmm. It ain't going to be us, it's going to be the spirit of the living God on us. I just talked about the anointing mm -hmm. of God on us, and He is going to direct us, and we are going to do it. Simple as that. Nope, that's wrong. Nope, that's right. Nope, nope, nope. I'm not sitting here. That's wrong, Lord, in Jesus' name. His book said this. That's right. This is what we should be doing. That's it. Anything else you say, Lord, don't. Our own pastor been preaching about distraction. Mm -hmm. Focus people don't get distracted when you're called by God. This is me, folks. God called you, and you know what you're doing. You're not distracted. That's right. Amen. See, the Jews and the Gentiles became distracted because everybody was in the first place. Mm -hmm. They talk about it. They fight like siblings, like family members. Mm -hmm. No, that's not God. That's us. Works. I did this. You did that. That, that, that. Compare and contrast. Not complimenting. We should be complimenting each other in the spirit of God in the church. When we're not complimenting each other, we see what we see in the land outside of it. We see it in here too. Because you're not complimenting and doing what the Spirit of God has taught us to do, which is to walk side by side, work together in unison. Ephesians tells us the Spirit of God, the unison of God's people together. That's how you just I told y'all he gave me a comments. Speaking boldly, the truth with the one that words talk about. Any questions? Comment? Yes, sir. Okay. So it easily is saying that, you know, just like what you were saying about how pastor was teaching about the strategy. So it's easy to say that that Peter came among the people right away. He was distracted by what he seen that he told his fucking guy, but what his whole purpose was that was going there for the people. And, and you know that distracting you is a little bit, but also you got to have this. I, I believe you have to have this ability that when you recognize that distraction, so that you be able to deal with the brother that all that and engaging and you put your people because you see you can let that off the side and all that already you got your mind put on how the people when I was like you know all that is also and you bring up an excellent point and something that I'm going back to scripture again because it all refers us back. One of the things that Jesus did and I always always go back and we could do it too or get better at it but we don't. When he had a specific purpose, the first thing he did was to get on me. <laughs> the first thing he did, Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5, starting at verse 1, he went up to the mountain to pray. That's what he did. When we start understanding that principle, solitude is key to life. Yeah. It's a key principle. If you are leading in any fashion, if you are a parent, you're a teacher, you're a minister, you're this, that. We have to be in a position where we hear what God is saying to us and tell us what to do. And the only way we can do that 
is that we have to be in a state of solidarity. If we never or we rather seldomly do that, solitude and prayer. If we don't do one or more, we are going to struggle with distractions. Because just like Christ did, when he came down from the mountain, what did they do? They reached out for him and they looked for him. And when they touched him, what happened to the virtue? It left. So when people coming at you, what do you think happening to you? They are pulling at you. You got your own stuff you're focusing with. You just been to the mountain praying. You just been to the mountain spending time with the Lord. Son coming at you. Daughter coming at you. Co-workers coming at you. This coming at you. That coming at you. They pulling a the virtue out away from you. So we have to be in a state of discipline where we learn to make time for that solitude in order to continuously do what God's called us to do. That is, is, a, is a very important point today in life. And we have to teach that from our little ones up. We got a little one. We just came back visiting her last week. And one of the things my son does a great job at is they shut everything off when they need to get her settled down and quiet. But she ain't the only one that settled down with it. They sell everything in the house. Mm -hmm. No TV, no noise, no sound. We have to do that. Then we can see and we can hear. Then when these distractions of the world coming at us, we see it, Brother Holmes, because we've been with the Father who has shown us what to do. Then when we come in the house of God, we already don't spend so much time with the Lord. We already see it. Before Pastor opened his mouth, we already have in talking about distractions, also we have to be careful not to become a distraction. And this led the the, um, the Jews, born Jews, felt like their birthright gave them <laughs> position. And if they were struggling with the fact that um, now Paul is coming in and telling us that the Gentiles also have right to that position, and they haven't paid any dues. I think they were saying it like that. And they were in turn being distracted by laying out all these rules telling the Gentiles, you know, you have to be circumcised and all these things. Mm -hmm. And we have to be careful that we're not sort of roadblocks mm -hmm. for our brothers and sisters. And that, that we have to be, um, we have to acknowledge that we're all in the same place. Christ died and was resurrected. We're all in the same place, but it's hard to let go of traditions, you know, long held traditions, and that's what um, was causing all this strife. And you and we're talking about distractions, but you know, there, there's things that uh, that come up that we're so tied to. You may not even realize that that is our motive. That's what's generating um, th these actions, and that in causes a son of us from other people around us. Mm -hmm. I mean, my father, I, I remember he got circumcised, he got circumcised for this very reason. And I'm sitting here thinking, you know, when it, okay, you're, you was married and all these children, and all of a sudden he thought he had to be circumcised. And this was why he was saying that scripture saying he had to be circumcised. And I'm telling you, I'm not a man, but it was a painful few days for him. <laughs> <laughs> and he, I mean, he knew the scripture, knew in the church, but he felt like until he was physically circumcised that he was not a full member. He was not in the family. So we have to make sure that we understand because sometimes it's not easy to recognize when we're distracted. Mm -hmm. That was the reason Paul came and said, I, I address it to his back. Because sometimes we're so in it, we need somebody else to come to us and love and say. And it's, it, it is interesting, and it's, it's a beauty, too. Another thing I like about this class and fellowship here is that you got to be confused, but we all go to the same place. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the beauty of learning is listening to different views, but ultimately coming up 
with it yourself and understand it for yourself. Mm -hmm. And I always say to her, she see me say it, it's one of my pet peeves. Now, basically, individual sport. It's not a team one. Team, yeah, we come to fellowship together and all that. Get to the Lord, mm -hmm. to the kingdom, is solo. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't care if you've been married 100 years. <laughs> it's solo. Mm -hmm. And all of us by ourselves have got to see this. Whether I'm talking about it today, or wherever we're talking, or you guys, any of y'all in here talking, we have to see this stuff by ourselves. Right. And as we see it prayerfully through the Spirit of God, and He revealed it to us, because if you ain't walking in that Spirit, you ain't seeing this stuff. And as she said, we can get in the way and be a distraction too, mm -hmm. because we get locked in and ready to go and feel our heart is right. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, bro, that's wrong. That's not right. That's pride. Mm -hmm. And what does scripture say about pride? What happens to it? The fall what? Fall fall fall. Fall. And so, even Satan knew the word, did he? Satan knew the word. He knew the word better than we did. Yeah. <laughs> but what does Satan want? He wants his own place. What do you think we're struggling with today? A lot of us have said that. We're struggling because we want what we need. It's hard. But we have to focus on it. We have to really understand. All of this at the end of the day, when we really zero in on who it's about, that takes all that. Yeah. But when we forget that principle, like we're all talking about, when we forget that, we can be subject to anything and everything. Yeah. I think it's important for us to hear. I've heard I heard you say it this morning, but when we go up to the mountain to pray. <laughs> And we are in solitude with Christ. Understand that when we come out of that solitude, the first thing we're going to meet is Satan. Mm -hmm. First thing. And so hopefully while you're in solitude, you're not playing. You know, it's for real. Mm -hmm. And when you come out and you face Satan, you know you all, you have the word of God because God is already prepared. And when you face him, you put that word on. Okay? Put that word on him. No, he'll go away for a few minutes, but he's coming back. Mm -hmm. And you can put that word on him again. And, and that's why uh, my brother here, you know, we always tell us it's important to study the word for yourself. Mm -hmm. We can sit here and listen Mm -hmm. But we've got to go home mm -hmm. and we've got to study the word so that the Holy Spirit can plant it mm -hmm. in our hearts. Mm -hmm. So when we get when Satan comes knocking at the door, mm -hmm. you know, we don't we don't have to wonder what we're supposed to do because we already got the word and we put it on him. Mm -hmm. And we put it on him as much as we need to until he leaves. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. That, that's, that's an important principle for life as Christians. It helps us to stand in the full arm when we are on the back, and we're always on the battlefield. Mm -hmm. Always. So you just yes. finished following what, what Jesus did because he was out and he, he went away on the mountain for 40 days. Mm -hmm. And whatever ever Satan says, something, he used scripture. Mm -hmm. And I was going to say what you just said about the same thing about studying. There have been times you've been, like you said, in a sermon and you're not sure mm -hmm. of what's being said. And so you go home and you you study. You said, oh, mm -hmm. so when you get the opportunity, you present it to that person mm -hmm. and tell them one-on-one, -on -one, start there. But sometimes the spirit of that onto you, what's happened to me, that it was so riled up in me that I knew it was wrong. I had just finished studying it was wrong. And I just finally just said it in a very strong aggressive, I am mad that you, what you're saying is not the truth. But sometimes you have to hear that tone in your voice. They didn't know you mean what you say. Saying it sometimes soft and mellow, sometimes they get the point across. Sometimes God says, they're wrong. And sometimes you have to say it in that tone. Yeah. I'm not sure what scripture's saying, but it, and yeah. it's in there, but it talks about God's people suffer. Why? Oh, oh, lack of lack of knowledge. knowledge. Yeah. People, 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 people perish. Even in coming here, when we came here, I told them like this. It was just, I said something that was just in my spirit, Lord. Just there. They gotta get it. It's like y'all have been saying. But that's something for us to, to help them. 
But they also have to if they don't that's what they're saying. what you're saying is that you know I had a conversation with my daughter this morning. I said, I wish I had my Sunday school lesson, but you need to meet it. I said, you're running up in the church and nothing changes. I said, but because they don't study. They're not studying the word. They go into church and they think that's a period. And they don't have to do anything else. And I said, I'm going to bring you my book. This year. And this was a good lesson for us. Mm -hmm. Her and I, with the relationship we have, and what I'm trying to see without me preaching all the time. <laughs> and so I said, I'm going to bring you my book this week because I've already read the lesson. I want you to read this. You know, yes. just something I just won't tolerate because, and I, and I use the word today, I do what I do because I stand up. It's the Jesus standing up inside of me when I'm going to where I'm going today, when I leave here. And then this is so timely for me because, I mean, it's just, you know, and those that need to see this, I did. Mm -hmm. You know, those that do it, and those that come to church and, 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 and know what the word says. But they're not getting any background reading or conversation or something like this. And they're just missing so much. And, and, and if they're really interested in growth. Yeah. That's, that's key. Interested in growing. You heard that? You caught that too, right? Yeah, interested in growing. Mm -hmm. The beauty of something that grows, we got rain yesterday, it's starting to come out Sunday. If something don't grow, what well, my professor used to say, learning should be like breathing. If you're not growing, you die. Mm -hmm. Regardless of age. And I think even now, as we look at it, we have to really continue to emphasize that at the church. When you talk in growth in particular, it's always not about the number of folks that's growing in their body. It's about the growth of the people, even the ones there. Yes, right. Where were you three years from now, five years from now, ten? We should not be in the same place we were five years ago. Spiritually speaking. No. But if we're growing, like you said, yeah. it should manifest itself through you. And she's not the same as she was five years ago. Because you can visually see the spirit will start shooting. That's if you walk by them, let me go back to that. Y'all folks that profess not their mouth, but their hearts are far from you. Yeah. That's Proverbs saying. Yeah. You profess it's not your mouth, but your heart is going to be, I got to get your heart right. Then you can accept that you walk in the rest of it. Ma'am? When we talk about growth, we have to understand we can't make things grow. We can't make it grow. We can't make our children grow. We can't make the grass out, to grow, out there to grow. What makes that grass grow is we put the right ingredients in the soil, and then we let it go and leave it to God to do what he does, and that is helps us to grow. Amen? Amen. Now, we, we're getting closer to the end of this lesson, and I might have passed you in a couple minutes, but I think that the biggest thing that we've all been really laying on is the apart from God, apart from Jesus Christ, we can't do anything. Sister Rice. Okay. Center up. Go ahead, ma'am. Unmute yourself. Sister Brax, are you there? Oh yeah, I wanted to say and and listening to the service, I guess people do forget. I thought um, as many times as we've heard and read that um, we are saved by faith and not by works, that it wouldn't be something that we have to keep telling people every day, but I guess it is necessary. Mm -hmm. And as Christians, we should know that we are, salvation comes through faith and it doesn't come through works. And uh, God would never have sent Jesus if, if, uh, if works could have done it. Because uh, he gave Moses gave them the law, and they couldn't mm -hmm. keep that. So I guess it's hard for me. I guess it's hard for me to keep understanding why people can't get that if they can't get anything else. If they couldn't get anything but saying it's not by works, because because uh, we know if it was by works, those who could uh, do more would get more. But since it's it's all through grace. And and it's to faith, and we can leave those works alone. You know, I don't know how many times we have to hear it before people actually believe it. 
That's my that's my comment. Because I think we ought to all know that it has nothing to do with works. Well, I think that, that, that one of the lessons in here was to understand the differences, understand how they go together, and ultimately to know that it's all about the faith in Jesus Christ. And right. one more, and then we'll turn it over to the pastor because we're losing time. Go ahead. What is the reason I think, Sister Grass, because people see works as active, and they don't understand that faith is also active. But in their minds, it's a state of works as being active and faith as being passive. Mm -hmm. And somehow we got to uh, get in our mind that faith is, is unless our faith is, is active, then it is useless. That's right. That's right. Yes, yes. Amen. Amen. Um, I think of this. It said works of the law, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. not word. Oh, God. Right, right. That's two different things. Two different things. Good. It's works of the law. Mm -hmm. He was talking about the certain state. Mm -hmm. Following the law in certain aspects. Mm -hmm. it's, all it's works of the law, not works of God. Right. So I don't want everybody to think mm -hmm. that just the last thing to my life. Don't do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> That's correct. He's right. Thank you. There got some work. He was talking about words the law. Words of your goodness. Words that you have. The, like the Jews did. He's, if you know that he's saying the word of the law, mm -hmm. don't let that get confused. Right. We're doing work for God. That's, That's okay. okay. I wanted to make one more comment that uh, we're not saved by works, but when once we are saved, we are then to work for Jesus and do the things that he would have us to do. So that's where the works come in. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. I think we all clear there. Here we are. Yes. Yeah, we're clear. Pastor David, you're on. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, hey, sir. I want to thank uh, Brother Lot for teaching us this wonderful lesson this morning. Man. And this example of how the church could have been divided mm -hmm. had not stood up and confronted the hypocrisy of uh, the two men, uh, Cephas. Uh, and Peter, we got to understand that, you know, as long as we are around certain people, we do certain things. But then when you see people come as Cephas saw, he he got up and he went over there where the Jews were, because, again, the law was still operating mm -hmm. and all that into question, just like he did with Peter. You know, if we're going to be honest about our faith in Jesus Christ and if the law is no, no, no longer binding then we cannot, when certain people come around, start acting like we used to act. Uh, this could have been, if, if Paul never addressed this, this could have divided uh, the early church. Uh, we are divided today because we don't have enough Pauls uh, to speak up. Uh, because, again, customs do get in our way and cause disunity. Let me, let me repeat that. Customs get in our way and that causes disunity. Uh, we, we even today uh, look at the most segregated time on Sunday morning. That's a custom. Uh, we're divided by race. Uh, we're divided by class. Uh, we're divided by history. All of those customs have come into play. And therefore, the church, the postmodern church, has been weakened because we have not had enough Pauls to stand and call out the hypocrisy that's in the postmodern church. But all of you have said, and you are spot on when you talk about works and faith. Uh, we are not saved because of our works. Uh, we are saved by faith in Jesus Christ. And after that, that produces the work uh, that we go and advance the kingdom of God. But we cannot be saved by our works. Christ is the end of the law to every man that shall be saved. So we're not saved by the law. Now, as I said before, and I will conclude with this, that just because we had the law, there were called the liturgical laws, 
Then we had the ceremonial laws. And then we had the moral laws. Those are three sets of laws uh, that we have to be conscious of. The moral law, which is the law given by God to Moses, that is always binding. Thou should not have no other God before me. That's always bound, binding. Thou should love thy neighbor uh, as thyself. Thou should not covet. Thou should not commit adultery. Thou should not do. Those what we call moral laws. Those laws transcend time and culture. They are always binding. But the ceremonial and the liturgical laws, they change over time. They're no longer necessary because those were the things done before Christ came uh, it was a foreshadowing of Christ to come. So after Christ came, we no longer needed the liturgical. We no longer needed to kill a lamb or a dove and sprinkle his blood because Christ became the what? The sacrificial lamb. So again, we have to now put our faith in Jesus Christ. That is the new covenant. That's the new dispensation that you and I are under. We're, we're no longer under that old covenant. We're no longer under that old law. We are under the law of love and under the law of faith, and that in itself produces the works. Just like James says, that where is your faith? If you got faith, it should produce the works. But if you have no faith, then what, what, what good is your works? So we have to make sure that we keep the works and the faith connected together in Jesus Christ, not outside of Jesus Christ, in Jesus Christ, so that we will not work, make the work that Jesus did on Calvary and paid for our sins, none and void. So again, I want to thank all of you for chiming in this morning. Wonderful job, wonderful teaching, Brother Lot. Let us pray. Father God, we just thank you for what Jesus Christ has done for us. And Father, help us to put our trust in your son, Jesus, because he said, no man come unto the Father but by me. So Lord, we know that what Christ has done for us, he has become the end of the law. So we thank God and we praise uh, God for Jesus Christ. Now, Father, now that we have put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ, now it produces the work in us that we might bear fruit for the kingdom of God. Help us to be fruit bearers. Help us to be sores. And we are praying that you send laborers in the vineyard. Bless all of our teachers, all of our students, all of us, Father, who have heard your word. And help us not to be hypocritical Lord, in our process of serving you so that we will not be, Lord, we will not be a hindrance to someone else and cause them to stumble in the faith. Now that we are closing out our Sunday school and entering into worship, we pray, Lord, that you pour out your spirit upon us, that we'll be encouraged to go on and advance your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.